PIX11 puts you first. Presented by Jacoby and Myers, New York's injury lawyers. We live here too. This spring, we've partnered with Jacoby and Myers to put your safety first. And in our last conversation, we talked about bike safety. We reminded folks to always wear a helmet, stay in the bicycle lane, and make sure to use flashing lights on the front and back of their bikes. So today we're going to discuss safety in your apartment, apartment buildings. As the weather warms up, people are starting to gather for parties and celebrations after more than a year in lockdown. Recently, one gathering in the East Village took a tragic turn when a young woman plunged to her death from a rooftop party. Joining us now is Angel Finkelstein, the managing partner from Jacoby and Myers, New York. It is always a pleasure to see you. How are you, Andrew? I'm doing great. Good morning, Marisol. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So when it comes to things like rooftop parties, how much responsibility do landlords and property owners have when it comes to ensure the safety of the people that live there? Well, landlords and property owners have an obligation to make sure their entire property, including the rooftop, complies with code. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes code describes uh, the amount of people that are allowed on a rooftop and have to make sure there's no dangerous or defective conditions on a rooftop. Uh, but the challenge is that they often ignore the rooftop. So uh, landlords and property owners and property managers, knowing that uh, rooftop parties occur, have to mm -hmm. take extra precautions related to ensuring the safety of everybody who attends those parties. You know, when we, we talk about uh, the incident that happened in New York City, but those are not the norm, thankfully enough. But if you do, find yourself at one of these parties you know the weather is getting nice people are excited to be out and about you just say don't don't do anything risky but you also say the responsibility of landlords and property companies is not just limited to outdoor spaces what do you mean by that well that's correct uh, landlord and property owners with ownership comes responsibility there are a lot of benefits to owning property but there's also a lot of responsibility associated mm -hmm. with it too and the core responsibility is to keep your property free and clear of defective, dangerous conditions. So what are, what are some, therefore, the, what are some of the examples of potentially harmful situations that renters should actually be reporting? Well, importantly, renters often see the dangerous and defective conditions, mm -hmm. and it's very important for them to report when they see uh, slippery stairwells, uh, a defective handrail, um, uh, uneven carpeting or uh, frayed carpeting that could cause a tripping hazard or uneven floorboards and sometimes unsafe elevators when elevators are not operating properly the doors are closing too quickly or there's misleveling make sure you report that to the owner of the property or the property manager oftentimes there's inadequate security you want to uh, be cautious if the front door is uh, the locks are not operating quickly and appropriately and oftentimes inadequate lighting mm -hmm. um, that are in the stairwells or the entrance ways uh, it are areas where um, crimes occur so right. we want to make sure there's adequate lighting I like that I remember way back in the day when I lived in Brooklyn I had a Polaroid camera and I would take pictures of the uneven uh, stoop now you just have your phone you can take a picture send it to your landlord and there you go um, best thing to do, best thing to do, <laughs> yeah. and make sure you keep a record of it. And let me add one other component. A lot of people may not realize, but uh, the adjacent property owner is responsible for the sidewalk maintenance as well. So it extends beyond just the uh, property itself, but also out to the sidewalk. So if you see anything on the sidewalk, make sure you tell your uh, property owner about it too. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, so what about renter's insurance? How does this play into this? Does renter's insurance cover accidents in all apartment buildings? So when we talk about accidents in apartment buildings, what we're really talking about is liability. Mm -hmm. Who's responsible when a harm occurs? And renter's insurance does not cover that. And here's the simple reason why. Renter's insurance covers only those things that people are responsible to maintain. Mm. So a renter isn't responsible to maintain the common areas, the elevator and all those potential defective areas that we talked about. So renter's insurance does cover your own personal property. It covers if there's a fire in the building so that you can recover the, the uh, cost of whatever it is to replace that you may have. But when it comes to liability, 
And if somebody gets hurt in your building, first of all, you don't have liability unless you actually created the condition. Mm. Um, but most of the uh, renters don't create defective conditions right. in their own building. Um, and the renter's liability insurance really only covers that which happens within your own apartment. Andrew, chock full of information. Thank you so much. I know our viewers who are apartment dwellers found that incredibly useful. Of course, if you'd My like, pleasure. absolutely, if you'd like more safety tips when it comes to city living, head to jmlawyer.com.